decision this morning not to go into the spot where the wide tent is living. Um, the wind has been switching about every five minutes. I wouldn't have wanted to be someplace where I had a certain buck that I was after with these light and variable wind conditions. It's just a killer. So kind of keep that in mind. If you see light and variable in the forecast or really low wind speeds, stay away from your best spots because the chances of messing them up are, are real high. Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cabela's, Easton Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers, Hoyt, Hoyman Tree Sauce, Muddy Outdoors, Nikon, Ozonics, Redneck Blinds, Rocket Broadheads, RTP Outdoors, Trophy Rock, Spot Hog Releases, Wilderness Athlete, Viking Solutions, and Realtree. This afternoon we're heading back into that big oak tree on the edge of that small clover plot overlooking the open gate. And this is where I've been hunting that buck that I've nicknamed the Wide Ten. Uh, I was just adding it up, it's been nine days since I've seen a mature buck. And I think I'm hunting almost every day. So let's say at least seven days of hunting in uh, between the, the last mature buck sighting. So I think we're due for tonight. He's the only one that we know of that lives in that area, but that doesn't mean that during this time of the year you can't get strangers that move in. But he's definitely all the buck that we need for tonight. Uh, hopefully he comes out again. He seemed like he was very localized to that spot. Like that was really, you know, he was a homebody and that was his home. So, you know, we'll, we'll get in there again tonight and, uh, you know, we'll watch that little clover plot and see if this buck pops out. We got a bit of a trip down through this ditch. As I mentioned last time we went in and hunted this spot, we've cleared out this ditch so we can come in through the back, the back door into this food plot rather than going right across the plot and into the tree. It makes the job of getting there a lot harder, but we do keep our human scent away from any place that the deer might stumble into it. See the 
I'll squat down and pee like that so then the butt can smell it and tell that she's not in here. He's behind her. You see it? Yeah. What is it? I can't tell. I can't believe that. That's crazy. <laughs> it's uh, it's probably four o'clock, maybe even maybe even earlier. And that doe squatted when she came out on that point. She squatted and peed. And I said to Drake, "There's got to be a buck behind her because usually they'll squat like that just to show the buck whether they're in heat or not." <laughs> And then he stopped right there facing me again, just like he did the last time. And I thought, we're going to have another one of those exact encounters where I'm going to stand here at full draw for a minute, and then he's going to end up not offering me a shot. Well, he took a couple of steps, and perfect broadside, 30-yard shot. That is awesome. That's one of the funnest hunts I've had in a long time. You know, we, I was just complaining at the truck that it's been nine days since we've seen a mature buck, and he was the last one that we've seen. Gosh, that deer is so comfortable in this plot. I mean, it's four o'clock. Probably not even four o'clock. 3.30, 3.30, so it's four, three and a half, three hours before the end of legal shooting time, and there he is. <laughs> but we don't need to stay up here any longer. We're gonna go down and look at him. This is gonna be the easiest recovery job I've been on in a long time. <laughs> Oh, can you believe that? That's so awesome. Oh my gosh. He didn't even run off. No, he just did. He just went back to the doe. He went right back to the doe. Acting like he, yeah, he wanted to go right back to the doe. I mean, he was a hard shot and he went right back to that doe. <laughs> oh man. It just shows, it just shows how quick your season can change during the rut. We're sitting here just thinking about how poor it's been. And all of a sudden, just like that, literally 15 seconds, 30 seconds, minute max, the whole season completely changes. <laughs> that is cool. That's the one we've been after the whole season. Day 16, I think, we're up to. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The, the interesting part on this buck, too, is every time we got pictures of this deer, every time we filmed him during the summer or this fall, it was right in this one little small area. He was the ultimate homebody buck. He wasn't going anywhere. We didn't get pictures of him on any camera, any place, other than the, the camera's right out in the middle of this food plot. So it's... I mean, every buck has a different personality once they get to full maturity, and this guy was definitely a homebody. The other thing we've seen on these deer, too, is once they get past a certain age, uh, they tend to be more daylight active, and that definitely proved out with this buck. He was, he was out dogging that doe at 3.30, and that's three hours, a little more than, it'd be, it'd be more than three hours, 
from the end of legal shooting time, and this deer was already out dogging a doe. So, I mean, I love it when they do that. It sure makes uh, hunting them a lot more fun. I've hunted my share of bucks that were nocturnal and you never even see them. It's fun to hunt some that occasionally are very daylight active like this one. Another thing that's probably just as big a factor as any on this deer was uh, that doe. And the first hot doe in any mature buck's core area is gonna bring him out. And I'll bet you that doe was either hot, you know, in estrus, or she was very close to it. So if you can find, you gotta be around the does, but if you can get lucky enough and catch that first hot doe in the area where that buck that you're hunting is living, I'd almost lay odds he's gonna be on that doe because they're excited and ready to go. The rut's just getting rolling and there's a estrus doe to, to be had. And, and these mature dominant bucks are gonna be the ones that try to find them. Later on in the rut, it becomes less and less critical because you know there, there's more does coming in. But that first one, it attracts all the attention. He's a cool old buck, that's for sure. I don't know how old this deer really is. Uh, I pulled up pictures from I think 2014, no, 2015, 16, and 17 on this buck. And he was about the same size every year. So he had to have been at least three years old in 15, which makes him at least five now. And my guess is that he's probably six. I would say he's probably six years old. That would be my guess. But uh, either way, he's going home in the back of the truck with me today. That's cool. I'm on my way back in to hang a tree stand for this evening's hunt, so I better keep my voice down here. But there were four things that jumped out at me about the hunt for the wide 10. Uh, first one is the fact that here was a buck with a personality that made him very killable. He was old enough, and we've seen this quite a bit, that he was more daylight active than a lot of bucks that we're used to. He'd gotten very comfortable in his surroundings, and also his range had shrunk way down, so he wasn't covering very much ground. So even though he was active, he was active in a small area, which made him pretty easy to hunt. Number two, I knew that he was there. Uh, you can't just take that for granted. You have to get those cameras out and you've got to cast that wide net and you've got to narrow it down and you've got to find bucks uh, in the areas that you can hunt and then figure out which ones have those ca uh, characteristics that make them easier to kill. Uh, number three was the fact that we didn't mess up the spot. Uh, we only hunted there, I think three times all season up to this point just being very careful to go in only when the conditions were perfect. Once you know where there's a buck living, the last thing you want to do is hunt really aggressively. And the fourth one was the hot doe. The first hot doe of the year. That first hot doe, boy, I'll tell you what, that is what churns the rut. Uh, those bucks are waiting, they're on edge, they're keyed up, they're ready to go. Then that first one comes into estrus and every buck in that area, and especially the most dominant ones, are going to be on their feet trying to find that doe. So if, if you've got a big buck that you've got figured out, you know where he lives, you're just waiting for the right time, the more often you can be in there and around those does near where that buck lives, the better your chances you're going to be there when that first one comes into estrus. And that's, that might be the only chance all season that you have the opportunity to kill that deer. So as I'm heading back in uh, to get this spot set up, I'm going to throw the show to Jared Mills. He uh, realized a lifelong dream and was able to purchase a piece of hunting land recently. He's gonna talk about that process and his plans for that farm and how he's gonna hunt it. Well, it's November 3rd here and Mike and I are getting ready to head to the stand, uh, but it's a special day. We are on our brand new farm that Mike and I just purchased and I can't tell you how, how excited I am. It's been a lifelong dream of mine to own land so we're getting ready to go out on our very first hunt ever on the property and got Ben Harshine with, with us. Um, ben Harshine of Huntero Maps and also Whitetail Properties who uh, helped us get this property. Yeah, uh, man, it was, it was awesome to work with you guys. Uh, my colleague Rich Baugh and I were able to uh, get our seller and, and you two together pretty quick on this one. Um, it's no doubt, no doubt phenomenal habitat and I'm just excited to see what you guys chase here in the years to come. Absolutely. Yeah, Jared mentioned we're super pumped. This is a prime whitetail Iowa river bottom land. It's about 224 acres 
Uh, most of it's in WRP. We've got another 50 plus acres of uh, solid timber, so it's nothing but cover, surrounded by uh, a lot of ag on the neighbors, and we're just super pumped to start chasing some big bucks out here. Yeah, we'll, we'll show you as we go kind of the things we do to improve the property. We'll talk about some of our goals from a management standpoint, things like that, but more than anything, we just can't wait to kind of have a property to manage together and have some fun on and hopefully kill some big deer. So uh, it's after three o'clock now, so Mike and I are going to have to get to the stand. And But thanks, Ben, for coming down. Yeah, good luck, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks good for looking us up, man. Yeah, no doubt. about five o'clock here and uh, Mike and I's management goals on this farm got tested early. <laughs> yeah. we just we First of all we picked probably the toughest tree on the farm to hang in. It's a giant cottonwood. We had to bring in reinforcement ratchet straps just to, to be able to make this tree work. So we got set up late of course um, and then I mean what 15 minutes probably after we were completely set up yeah. And doe jumped up out of the grass and looked about 20 yards behind her and good buck and sure enough it's probably the highest scoring deer that we have pictures of on this farm so far. <laughs> you know with, without any history with these deer unless they're obvious five plus you know big old body it's very mature in the face we're kind of gonna count them as four-year-olds just because we don't really know and, and that buck right there is a deer that if he is only four he could be something special next year. And that's, uh, that's just kind of how we want to start managing this farm, is just uh, let those four-year-olds go. I think we're in a good enough area that we, uh, we can do that, and, and these deer might have a good chance of, of making it the next year. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty awesome first encounter, 15 minutes into your first sit on the, on the new farm. And you literally can't ask for anything better than that. I'm not sure that this was a good idea tonight. I've seen a lot more people and a lot more vehicles than I've seen deer. But if this is where he lives, this is where we're gonna hunt him. And the only information we've got on that old buck is that he's someplace in this area. This coming week should be really good. 
the weather forecast looks good. And I've always said November 7th is my favorite day for good reason. I mean, we've had a lot of success on and around the 7th of November. And looking at the forecast, it should be nice and cool, which means that the bucks should be on their feet. So take advantage of this coming week and get out. And uh, we'll see you right back here again next Monday for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.